Hello everyone, when it comes to using a PT100 sensor with a Max 31 A65 boards, there are so many options and unfortunately there are so many ways that your setup can fail. In this video I will talk about some of these choices for Clipper and also show you a few ways of combating the errors like the dreaded ADC out of range. If you just need a guide for using Max 31 A65 boards, I have a guide about that as well both in video form and in written form on Boron Dozuki so I will link both of them down in the description below so if you need that you can find it down there but uh, yeah in this video I, as I said I will talk about uh, some of the choices you have and uh, some combating some of the errors I divided the video into chapters so you can skip to the part where you are more interested in but I do recommend watching all of this if you are thinking about using a PT100 as this will give you a perspective and you will know all of the options you have plus you will know a few ways of combating the errors as well so uh, yeah that's it so let's begin the video firstly I will talk about the Max 31865 boards out there and the connections to the MCUs. For boards, there are three options. Ray's PT100 stick that he designed for Voron, Adafruit or Clone Max 31A65 boards, or CJ MCU Max 31A65 boards, which is basically the same board but in a smaller form factor, so yeah, it's a nice compact board that I like more than the Adafruit design, but in terms of the schematic, it's exactly the same. The PT100 stick slots into a step stick slot on, uh, for an easy solution, while Adafruit or CJMCU ones are standalone units. PT100 stick is designed for 3.3 volt logic MCUs that support SPI for step stick slots and supply to 3.3 uh, volt to set slots. That's why it doesn't work with, for example, Flymaker, which supplies 5 volts, even though that supports uh, SPI. And there are, I'm sure, many other boards out there that have problems. So, yeah, if you want to use that, just keep think of it as it works with SKRs and nothing else. And if you really need to make it work with something else, just do your research about that. And the also the Adafruit and CJMCU one, CJMCU ones have a built-in voltage regulator, so it, they work with five volt as well. With the PT100 stick you connect your RTD or our PT100 in our case to the stepper connectors on your MCU while with Adafruit or CJ MCU you connect to the screw terminals on the module and as I said before the PT100 stick slots into a step 6 slot but with Adafruit or CJ MCU modules you have a few options First option is to just grab the SPI signals from the step 6 slots and use wires to connect. You can also use the hardware SPI pins that are available on the X1 and X2 expansion headers. However, with both options the SPI signal has to travel on wires which can be unreliable as SPI doesn't really support fly flying wire connections and the result will be ugly and you will have you may have trouble uh, mounting the module as well. That's why I designed an adapter board to slot these boards into a step stick slot just like Ray's PT100 stick. The advantages are compared to that is you don't need to do any SMD soldering like like on the PT100 stick and it is a compact design just like it. It is a little larger but not by much and it shouldn't interfere with anything. Also, since these modules have a voltage regulator built in, you can use them with boards that provide 5 volts to step 6 as well, as long as they support SPI there obviously. With this setup, you use screw terminals for RTD wiring, unlike the motor connectors on the PT100 stick, but other than that, there is no functional difference. So in, if you're interested in this board design, I will link the Gerber's and the PCBWay page in the description below. So you can get a brand, any PCB manufacturer you want to manufacture these boards. One more wiring option is using your Raspberry Pi as a new MCU. To do this, you wire according to the diagram on the left and then use Studio Raspberry Config to enable SPI. Use the rest of the steps to download and then build a Linux process as basically a firmware for Clipper. 
and then you edit your printer.csg file at the Raspberry Pi at the top as an MCU and under extruder or bed if you're using it for bed you add the sensor type and any other options you need you can find all of this information including the commands, the pins and the edits you need to do to printers.cfg in the description below in a paste pin link as I said I did encounter a bug and that is you can see that unless my printer is on the sun these uh, temperature readings are ridiculous and well yeah this only really happens after you issue a firmware restart or save config which includes the firmware restart this doesn't happen mid print or anything like that and the fact that uh, this isn't cutting the heating just uh, shows you that this the clipper firmware really isn't thinking that the temperature is this it's just reporting this for some reason some weird bug but this bug goes away in like 30 seconds to a minute tops and after that it's just down to the regular reading so yeah it doesn't really matter this doesn't happen mid print as I said it just happens after a firmware restart so yeah it's not a big deal just be aware of this bug and the possibility of other bugs as well as for the PT100 uh, sensor options, the common option is to use a two-wire PT100 which is available from E3D, Triangle Lab and many other stores. It is easy to use with, uh, it, it is easy to use and it has the least wires. Unfortunately the other options exist for a reason. Two-wire sensors, especially with unshielded cabling, can be affected from electrical noise and cause errors. As a result, when I encountered this, at first I tried shielding, shielded cabling and when that didn't help enough, I switched to a 3-wire sensor. So the simplest way I can explain the problem is the PT100 sensors have a resistance which changes according to the temperature and it is around 100 ohms nominally, which is a pre-low pre resistance. So, and it is easily affected from electrical noises, the cables resistance, connector resistance, and you know, any other random stuff. Two wire sensors have no way of combating this, but with three wires, by measuring the resistance from uh, the wire that connects to the same pole of the sensor, basically doing a U-turn goes to the sensor and comes back without going through the sensor, the MAX31865 chip can find the resistance and it can subtract this uh, resistance from the measurement and it can give you a more accurate and cleaner uh, reading. This fixed my problem but also remember that most people don't have uh, problems with using uh, two wires. That said, there is no downside to this so yeah, if you just want to be sure you can go with a three wire. To my knowledge, there isn't, there aren't many places that sell 3-wire PT100 RTDs in a V6 form factor, so I will link one in the description below, the place that I bought it from on AliExpress. Uh, keep in mind two things, one, the termination you choose doesn't really change the wire count, so even if you choose the 2-wire, it comes with a 3-wire sensor, so yeah, if you want to try 2-wires, and if you want the connector pre-crimped, you can go with that. They just uh, connect the same two cables that go to the same pole on the sensor to the same pin. And uh, other than that, that doesn't really matter. And the second thing you should keep in mind is uh, the cable is the wires and the cable are really thin. S my guess is something like 30, 32 gauge or something like that. They're ridiculously thin, which isn't a problem for the sensor but it just means that it is really hard to strip the cable and crimp connectors on it so if you have to do that just uh, be careful and leave some slack on the cable so when you unavoidably uh, cut the cable accidentally or something like that you just have some spare also do keep in mind that uh, while the cable is shielded uh, it's not really terminated into any plug or anything like that so if you want to use the shielding again you will have to do it yourself but yeah again to my knowledge this is the only option out there so if you want it well this is the only option 
four uh, wire and two wire sensors with uh, adapter port you just jump uh, to uh, solder pad jump jumps and do, you, do, you do the same with the CJMCU ones as well and you don't really do need to do anything for four wires on those two options for the PT100 stick uh, you don't need to do anything for two wire sensors but for four wire sensors you need to uh, cut the traces marked with an X for three wires for adapted boards you cut the trace marked with an X and jump the pads marked with a rectangle on the CJMCU ones you do you need to do the same but instead of cutting a trace you remove a zero ohm resistor basically a jumper and other than that you do the same thing for connecting the uh, three wire sensor to the PT100 stick you cut the traces marked with an X and jump the, tra jump the pads with marked with a line and yeah the edge should work that way now let's talk about some of the common errors you might encounter the most common error seems to be the dreaded ADC out of range error if you are seeing this error before getting any reading most likely the problem is the wiring double check all of your wires and if they are ok try using another MCU or Raspberry Pi and if you are seeing this error after starting a print the problem might be that there is too little capacitance between the RTD wires I found that well I found that while the stock designs have a hundred and a third cap between the RTD wires that's not enough to filter the signal so through trial and, trial and error I found that you can solder something between 100 to 500 and a third caps between the RTD positive and negative the ones marked with the rectangle on the screen and by soldering that you can uh, you can clean the signal, the electrical noise, etc. With the PT100 stick you can do the same, but uh, yeah, you have to desolder a SMD cap, the one I marked with the rectangle, and just solder a larger cap there. So just add a hundred more to the values I mentioned for it to be effective. Another error you see is the over voltage or under voltage error, which can happen if the wiring is bad or if there is not enough capacitance if you are confident in your wiring follow the same steps for adding a cap between the RTD wires that I mentioned a second ago for both errors ADC out of range and over under voltage if uh, any of this doesn't really help you I recommend trying shielded cabling and or uh, 3 wire sensor again 3 wire sensors are theoretically superior but yeah, maybe shielded cabling will be enough and lastly, another error you might encounter is the RTD input is disconnected. Uh, so far, based on what I've read on other people's experiences and my experiences combined, this really seems to happen only if the wiring between the module to the MCU or wiring between the RTD to the module is faulty or if you're using uh, flying wire SPI, this can happen as well. So I recommend checking all of your wires and if you're using flying wire, try to figure out a different solution if you can. And yeah, that should uh, help your problems. And well, yeah, that's it for this video. I hope this helped you choose parts and or diagnose your problems with your setup. If it was helpful, please leave me a like down below and thanks for watching.